Hello everybody, my name is Rain, Rain Thyme, and this is the fourth video in my Pandemonium Raid series, so let's just jump right in. Alright, the seventh circle. I shall establish control of Abyssos while keeping an eye on your battle. When the dust has settled, Hephaestus will have nowhere left to flee. I sense that Hephaestus has come close to perfecting his image of a Hemetheos, which means his research is in its final stage. I, really, I still don't really know what a Hemetheos is, because it, it's been different each time, right? Because it's like a vampire, and then it's like a... I don't know, it had like a, a green venom out of the one lady's arm. And then I don't know what this is gonna look like. Really, qu really fast queue times today, though, which is nice. When I was doing Asphodelos, I had like 15 minute queues or longer. I love the I love the the design. I love the designs for these environments here. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know I don't know about interning this one. I really love the music for these. They're, it's really good. <laughs> Damn, though, it's huge. This is what it became of the heat. This is what became of the keyboard. How dreadful. If you will not leave, then you shall become mine. What does that mean? What does that mean? Okay. Hopefully. Gifted new test subjects. The light shall blind. Reminds me of a sin eater, but just how like different they are from like the beginning. Uh, okay, so go forward. Is the savage out for this yet? Because I imagine the savage version of this would be pretty intense. Not that I've ever done a savage. Ooh, maybe don't stand in line. Ooh. I wonder if we should have split up more. Crap. Okay, thanks, La Brea. I was gonna say, maybe we should have spread out more. I like the sort of character development we're getting with like La Habrea here, because I remember like up until the point where he died, he was like really just just a dick, and that was like his only character trait, which just being really like <laughs> uh, just being really rude, and maybe like a bit of like this character's like cunning or something.
Wait. So yeah, over here I think. No. Uh, I. They're kind of rotated. I assume they would like charge forward. But I guess they're just like AOEs. Whoa, 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 what the fuck? Did they change the direction? Oh shit, shit, shit. Fuck. Thank you, your worries. Okay, now where do we go, guys? Over here? Is this safe? Oh, there we go. I really gotta watch where other people go. I like, I just do not, I just do not know where. Like once you've seen the mechanic once, it's fine, right? For this one, I think, because it's like, there. it's not super hard to dodge once you've seen it. But if you don't know what's going to happen, then it's, yeah. Okay, so, okay, yeah, I'll just, uh, please move, yeah, yeah, okay, we just, there you What was this? Okay, let's see which one they are. Okay, so I just I can just stand here and be fine. No, I cannot. I need to get to that over there. I go back, I guess. Okay, which one is his? Uh, oh shit. You have to stand in these? So wait, can I move there now? Alright. Still only at 34%. Is it just gonna spam this now? Is it like the Hades fight? Have we just taken so long to kill it? It's gonna just do it. I guess not, it's just a series of uh, raid wars. I think this is gonna be the, the, one, the other one, right? What do I do here? Oh shit. Fuck. I guess here. And then I'll knock me down, but hopefully no. Oh, I was hoping it wouldn't knock me, knock me that far. It's okay, I can get out of it. Uh, okay, there's things there. I think here I'm safe, right? And I just move back. Okay, so that must have been what killed me the other time was that there was two sets of them and I didn't notice. 
Oh shit. Yeah, we need a healer, LB. Nice. He's got like a sigil on his forehead. There we go. Move in. I'm. Are we gonna have to move out now? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go over here and do it. Yeah. Go. Uh, so I gotta move back. the holy thing again so we got spread for that. Yeah. Should be good here. Alright. We've almost got it. 11%, 10%. God, this Forbidden Fruit thing's kind of remind me of, like, the... the Baylet thing from Berserk. Oh, wait, fuck. Alright, there we go. There we go, GG. Alright. Duty complete, let's go. I didn't, I didn't die as much that time. I don't need any of these. The moment Ag Agdistus, Agdistus, the moment Agdistus was slain, the flow of Aether and Pandemonium focused keenly on this location, creating a funnel of sorts through which we could quickly convey ourselves. It was almost as if we were ushered here. The space was created with care and concealed with powerful wards. Only a keyword would have been able to detect it, and even then with great difficulty. Ergo, it has to be him. Festos. Or her? If only I could restore Tataros to order, but I'm afraid this is the most I can manage with such power as remains to me. It has been too long, Master Lahabria. Likewise, keyword Agdistis. I should not be surprised you were able to break free of Hephaestus' spells, even diminished as you were. 
was not an easy task, even with your aid. His curses dig into one's heart, creating a storm of emotions that is all too easy to become lost in. Only by chance did a fragment of myself remain, illuminating a path through the madness. And thus am I able to appear before you now. Even while my body was powerless to resist Hephaestus' command, some small part of my logical mind stood alone in defiance, even managed to speak to the outside world. The report. That was you. Doubtless you recognize my voice from the many times I have called out to you. The hope that those pleas would not fall on deaf ears was all that kept me from succumbing to the hopelessness. Wait, so is, is she responsible for the crystal as well? Or just the distant voice? But I have a greater purpose here than simply saying my farewells. There is something you must know, that the tragedies of the past do not repeat in the present. Forgive me for what I am about to do, Master Lahabrea, but the story must be told. It is the only way to understand Hephaestus' fixation on Erythronus. No longer can you hide your heart away. Hephaestus? No, the mask marks him as La Habrea. Master La Habrea had brought an end to Lady Athena's life and sealed away a part of his memories and emotions within Hephaestus. There are my re these are my rec these are my recollections of the moments following. And you truly have no intention of revealing the truth to Erythonos? My lesser half is now buried where none can find it. We would be wise to do the same with our memory of this day. Blood should not sway the spirit so, but Athena's teachings have warped the boy. I fear he would see our star burn to keep his mother safe. Erythonos believes that he feels love, but he is shackled by dependence. He could not bear the truth. His dependence makes it all the more... His dependence makes it all the more important to be open with him. He will seek answers about his mother's loss, which shall inevitably which shall inevitably lead him to you. Are you willing to accept the are you willing to accept the blame for Athena's death? Are you willing to accept your son's hatred? If it if that is what comes to pass, then so be it. Better to be burdened with hatred and the knowledge that Athena sought his body and soul mere tor. If that is what comes to pass, then so be it. Better to be burdened with hatred than the knowledge that Athena thought his body and soul mere tools to be used and discarded. Even were I to tell him what his mother plotted, he would never he would ever seek reasons to believe that the true fault lies with me or with him. Should he merely hate me, he will remain unfettered by doubt, free to serve the star far from his parents' shadow. Well, that's sad. La Brea is not so bad after all. Erythonos loved his mother more than life itself, and yet, what a dreadful truth you've borne all this time. Such is La Habrea's nature, every action, every word, a solution to life's great dilemmas, and none to spare for his own. And what, have I, and what I have revealed to you is but a small portion of a larger picture. I shall leave it to La Habrea to paint the rest for you, and for Erythonos, I hope. Thank you, Agdistus. I always admired you, you know. What choice did I have when you sacrificed so much to guide our star to the heavens?
Hephaestus has doubtless sensed that the final keyword has fallen. We should return to the surface before he moves to strike us here. If we are to face him, we must be prepared to bring our full strength to bear. <sighs> it was Erethonus' hatred of his father that caused him to fall victim to Hephaestus' magics, yet the root of that hatred were born from a son's love. A love nurtured not by a mother caring for her offspring, but by a researcher creating the ideal test subject. Pandemonium abounds with demons indeed. Agdistus was ever a bold woman, even in her final moments, that she would unearth the secrets of my past for all to look upon. Still, full glad am I that she faced you as her last opponent. I could think of none more worthy to send her soul off to the other side. I'm gonna stop there for now. I had to take a bit of a break there. Uh, got a bit late. Uh, I'm back at the end of the day. I'm gonna finish this up. One final wish. The vision you saw told the story far more eloquently than I ever could. Athena was consumed by her research and was willing to sacrifice her own child if it hastened her progress. She did not offer him a position here out of a sense of love or pride. It was merely because she knew he would be the most pliable test subject. I see now why you hid the truth from him. I cannot say with certainty that Erythonos could handle the weight of such betrayal after holding his mother on a pedestal for so long. Unfortunately, it seems not even her death has ensured his safety. Hephaestus has taken up Athena's research and succeeded in creating Hemethoi. I know not what his ultimate end is, but his plane is connected with the resurrection of Athena. That knowledge alone is sufficient to direct our next course of action. As for the rest of your story, we shall hear it after we have returned Erythonos to safety in accordance with Agdisis' last wish. Very well. I can at least assure you that finding him shall prove relatively simple now that Hephaestus can no longer bend pandemonium to his will. There is but one place left for him to find refuge, the Black Heart of Tartarus, where Athena built her testing compound. We can assume that Hephaestus will offer fierce resistance. I must focus my every effort on securing a safe means of approach. La Brea, I would ask that you assume the duty of summoning Rain's Phantom Warriors. I have no objections. My ability to fight within Dataros would be greatly diminished in any case. However, I wish to deal the final blow to Hephaestus myself. There is no need to dirty your hands for such a deed. I take it then that you have no intent to seal him away as before. The presence I felt when I encountered Hephaestus bore little resemblance to the entity I created. By his own hand, he has become something far more wicked, and the same magics that once shackled him may very well shatter before the power he wields. On my pride as a researcher, I am loath to repeat the same mistake twice. I would not see these events play out again, and so he must be extinguished. Well then, I shall open the way forward. May we finish this together. I don't mind La Habrea kill stealing me. <laughs> it seems appropriate. Having him finish up the mess he made. Ah, oh, okay. The eighth circle. And that'll be Abyssos done. And then I can move to 
part for the roofs. Alright, let's see how it goes. Erichthonios is mine, heart and soul, and with your death, none will be left to stop me. Is that, so that's how you say the name. Huh. It's the only time it's been voiced. Perfect imperfection. Now it's red instead of blue. Thanks, La Habrea. Alright, let's go get him. Alright. I wonder if this is hard. Rest eternal in the dark depths of this prison. Fulgent flame, my servants rise. Uh. Oh wait, isn't this like a? Out of my sight! Leave not but ash in your wake. I thought I saw something about it being a mount at some point. Let seep sorrow into your heart. Like if you get like a, a flaming dragon mount from Savage, I'm gonna be so excited to do that. A fitting death. I've never done Savage before either. I don't know if they do they just give everyone a mount on a that clears, or is it like the same as it? Do you still have to roll for it? Behold the fruits of sacrifice. You are prey to be consumed. Bigger version of that thing that the one lady had from Perish in flames and race. Go forth and sate your Wait, boundless what? hunger. What is this one? Over here? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, makes sense. So he like activate, activates them and then. I guess we run over here because the thing is one of those two. Yeah. Alright, now over here. From fulgent flame my servants rise. Yo, I like that a lot. Out of my sight! Oh shit. I'm lucky like snapshot it right before I walked into that. Like I saw the dragon go up to him, and I was just like, oh yeah, it's, wish kinda, it just, it's just kind of there, like an aesthetic thing, kind of like with Ron G. And it's like, no, it's like, I can't. Yeah. 
he you always have four legs or is that rage. Rage. Oh shit. Uh, and then yeah, and then over here. That's interesting. I imagine in Savage it's just gonna be like eight of those or something. Talking about Savage, like I'm gonna do it soon, but who knows when I'm gonna get around to it. I'd like to do it soon, but I don't know if I'm prepared for that. Sear flesh from bone. But ash in your wake. What was the Phoenix one again? Just, uh, just I tire okay, of okay, this boss. Yeah. So just the opposite of the dragon. of sacrifice. Okay, so far pretty easy. You are prey to be consumed. In flames and grace. Go forth and shake uh, your flounder thunder. They both went into one and just like super boosted it. That'd be interesting. But then there's like only like one corner of them. Fulgent flame, my servants rise. It doesn't look like it does that though. A fitting oh, death. Shit. Yeah, I need to pay more attention to the dragon. I don't know if I've ever looked at it and been like, I need to move out of that. Can I have a rose, please? I shall see my wish fulfilled. Three people from res. Can anyone just like throw one out? You will know oh, my okay. rage! There's Bissos. Uh, ooh, a minion.
The chain of events that led to this moment began with my error, when out of mercy I confined you here. Now I break it and leave no trace of you behind. This is not over. I see you will not go peacefully. He's mad. Even a cast-off would uphold his pride, though such an impulse must speak to the overwhelming arrogance of my other half. The name Hephaestus shall grow to eclipse yours. None shall remember the deeds of La Habrea once I fulfill Athena's ambition and bring Erythonus's dream to life. You speak as if you care a whit for the boy, then why do you cower behind him? There are some desires which must not be realized. Athena would see the world destroyed if it meant she could find hers in the ruins. As for Erythonos, he knows not what his wish would beget, a truth which you have hidden from him. Do you truly believe a father's role is to deceive and manipulate? I mean, as far as deceiving goes, you're not really one to speak. My wish? You would claim the name Hephaestus and call yourself his father, yet you blind his mind and body in dark chains. Your words, and your pride, ring hollow. Athena wanted her son by her side, and he desires to return there. What wickedness is there in mending a broken family? Athena cared not for Erythonos, beyond how he could serve her ends. You claim to be acting in his interest, but it is plain that you are no different. As I ushered Athena to her end, I vowed that my sole mission in life would be to guide this star true. In service to that, in service to that vow, I silenced the whispers of my heart. I could not nurture a son whilst an entire world looked to me for guidance. For that choice, I bear the responsibility. Yet he is still my son, and I'll not suffer you to seduce him with false hope. You, who are not but the bitter dregs of Athena and I, the very worst of us. Mother, she... N no then who? How do I... Come back to us. Because they're, they're kind of both La Habrea. Wouldn't want them to get confused. I I hear you. I owe you and Thymaeus an apology. Athena, did you ever? And La Habrea, I... I will have my say. How? His mind was mine. I can't explain. Rain's words reached me through the haze. They rang loud and clear. As did the words of another, in a voice much like yours, but resounding with truth.
How? When did you master these bonds? Oh, we've interred much worse. You worthless... You... Ah! It appears my failures have borne fruit after all. Yeah, what is that? Why does it have a constellation? I thought only the 14 had those. You did well, son. Hey, there we go. But now why do we enter t uh, Tartarus? Is there just things rampaging down there or is there... Cause it, it feels, it feels a bit wrapped up now, so... Uh, is something going to go wrong? Uh, where are we? With Hephaestus, with Hephaestus' essence contained in this crystal, we may safely return Erethonos above, that he would bind Hephaestus with only half his senses intact. So, I guess we, we didn't cage him within, within the facility, we caged him within the crystal then, huh? I thought the crystal was just something he had on him. Like it was just like a thing in his pocket that fell out. Uh, you quite understated his adeptness in the art of internment. It was hardly what I had in mind, but a feat deserving of praise nonetheless. Hey, look at that. Waha Brea. Uh, kind of a respectable guy now, huh? Truth and perfect. I feel no trace of Hephaestus' poison in your mind, and for a blessing it appears your body is none the worse for wear. I made my way here as soon as I could. I no longer sense Hephaestus, and the force assailing Pandemonium's barriers has ceased. Are we rid of him for good and all? I see. Despite his muddled senses, Erethonus felt that to seal Hephaestus away was the proper course. Of course. It wasn't so noble as that. I only knew something had to be done, so I acted. La Habrea, was that how you dealt with Hephaestus in the past? Indeed. He was not but the parts of my memory and soul that I had cut away, a mass of aether without a material vessel. Storing his essence within a crystal was the most logical choice. On that matter, I believe the time has come for you to share the rest of your tale, of Hephaestus' creation and Athena's end. I heard your words, but only vaguely, as if from under the surface of a deep pool. My mother wished... To use me? I would hear the whole truth. I want to know what happened here and what drove Athena to act as she did. I'm ready. A 
Athena's brilliance outshone us all. Even the other members of the words of Wahabrea were as children in comparison. So dedicated to research was she that it was not unheard of her, unheard of for her to forget meals or even sleep. Her mind was ever grasping for knowledge, and it was in the endless search that she became obsessed with uncovering the secrets of life. You see, while we can conceive life in various forms, the means of creating a soul are beyond our ken. Similarly, though we can enhance and alter our physical vessels, we have ever been bound to them. Athena's purpose was to shatter these limitations. I was wondering about this when I saw it, but they kind of got the double helix spiral that the of like DNA sequences, you know? The, the red and blue, you often see in like the diagrams and shit. But anyways, you see, while we can conceive... I've, I've read this. Such limitations were not meant to surpass. Such limitations as we were not meant to surpass. She thought... She sought to enter the realm of the gods. Scarce few have the ability to comprehend what such a task entails, let alone the courage to attempt it. For most, the thought would be an idle fantasy, considered once and then discarded. Not so for Athena. As leader of the words of Lahabrea, I spoke with her often about transcending our being. From an academic perspective, the challenge has plagued countless researchers through the ages. It was during these musings that I began to formulate a theory, a means by which a person could meld with the creation. The weakness of, of one could, would be mitigated by the strength of the other, and the result could be something greater than we have ever imagined. Although it was but a theory, Athena insisted that I develop it further, curious about every detail along the way. Our conversations became more frequent, and our platonic relationship grew into something much more. I take it I was born not soon after. It is an interesting idea, I have to say. In theory, anyways. Just so, I believe she bore true affection for me, and was blind to her hidden intentions. When Pandemonium was built and she requested to lead the researchers, I saw no reason to deny her. Even setting aside our relationship, her accomplishments as a scholar made her the obvious choice. However, in giving her Pandemonium, I also gave her free reign to conduct whatsoever experiments she could devise. And when you found out what she was doing, you killed her. I made haste to Pandemonium the moment I learned of these hidden chambers. I left Agdid... Agdistus to keep watch from Tartarus' vestibule as I ventured deeper, knowing not what would await me. As for what occurred next, tis best you see with your own eyes. What do you mean? Oh, we, we doing the we doing the video mode again. All right, hit play. I'm ready. I don't have any popcorn though. Is that me? You are well aware that out of respect for our neighbors in Elpis, the researchers of Pandemonium are not to be masked. Yet you stand before me with your face covered. What petty defiance is this? What indeed? So quick are you to rebuke me, though you yourself have not set foot in these halls since their inception. You must have known you could not conceal this from me, and Agnistus forever, as well you know that I cannot allow it to continue. I shall say this but once, release, release Erethonos, else I have no choice but to strike you down. Ah. 
I would meet my end at the hands of none other. However, ere my time has come, I will have you know the why of it. Then you will not desist. Once you understand what has driven me this far, you shall see that stopping was never an option. The feelings of one weigh little against the needs of an entire star. Of course, that I am well aware. But did you not deign to descend from your lofty heights simply to lecture me as you would a child? But you did not. You have an interest in my motivations. What possessed Athena, peerless researcher and mother to the son of the great Lahabrea, to embark upon the path to her downfall? History will demand an answer, but it is you who deserves one. Give me your hand, Lahabrea. I couldn't read that? That was too fast. Impossible. You bonded your souls? What is that? Hang on. Let me open this. Go back to event. History will demand an answer, but it is you who deserves one. Give me your hand, Lahabrea, and we shall know one another more deeply than ever before. Okay, I see. That's all it said. Impossible. You bonded your souls? Did they? Aye. That the boundless... Aye. That the boundaries between us would cease to be. She offered me everything to be understood. I found myself unable to refuse. At that moment, my mind was a storm of question. Yet, questions. Yet one roared the loudest. Did Athena ever truly love me? I am become the memory and mine. And I be. Feel it. My heart, all that I am. Yes, as if it were my own. A fathomless desire to dissect the mysteries of life, to transcend our mortal flesh and bleed into a higher plane of existence. An unquenchable thirst for knowledge, not a single thought spared for another, for the star. disappointing yet what is known cannot be unknown you have beheld my lifeless work try as you might to excise the memory the seeds of desire remains and when it takes root you too shall be consumed by the self same fervor I will dig it out. I will dispense with the corruption in my soul ere your rotten insights spreads. Twas my weakness that let this wickedness fester, but never again. Today I cast aside fickle emotion and abide in duty alone. Today I renounce all that I was and live only as La Habrea.
Thus did I forsake the part of myself that had been polluted by Athena, sealing it within a crystal. Never did I think I would one day face those memories made flesh. Forgive me my bluntness, but your actions bordered on insanity. To go to such length to escape your memories, you nearly rewrote your very existence. Rest assured, the change did not go unnoticed by our colleagues in the convocation. Igorim and M itself, in particular, made plain the suspicions they harbored. As well they should have, that you escaped with your life was nothing short of a miracle. Why didn't you destroy the crystal there and then? Did you think to one day make use of the knowledge it contained? I will not deny any such considerations played into my decision, but my main motivation was fear. I had never attempted such a feat before. The crystal was my sole recourse should something go awry with the remainder of my soul. In hindsight, to cling to it was a mistake born of doubt. Athena must have anticipated that I would resort to such measures, and prepared a vessel beforehand that would accept the dregs of my soul. Hephaestus doubtless believed that he was performing his duty as a husband and father should, yet in truth he was but a puppet being pulled to and fro by Athena's desires. His goal was not to raise himself high. He thought only of seeing his dear Athena live again and that she might finish what she began. Yet for all of that, he and I were alike. We yet shared a fatal flaw, you see. Our need for control blinded us to other perspectives. While I was enthralled to Hephaestus, you called out to me. What say you now? Does La Habrea speak true? I'd say so. did promise. I just want to know one thing. Did you truly believe that hiding the truth was best for me, even knowing how I felt about my mother? The La Habrea I know had a fatal flaw after all. I'm still not convinced. I have said all that I can say. Now it is for you to choose to believe me or not. The La Habrea I know holds duty above all else. I would sooner prostrate myself before an erupting volcano than place my fickle emotions in his path. When you return to the service, you'll doubtless don that mask once more. So before we climb out of this forsaken pit, I suppose I should say... Thank you, Hephaestus. That's nice. I have said all that needs to be said. From this moment forward, I pledge that my heart shall not lead me astray. Hephaestus was far more than an imitation of La Habrea. He was quite literally a part of them. But La Habrea, to me, is a man who thinks of naught but his duty, by casting aside the burden that Hephaestus represented. He shall become ever more himself, in a way. I've heard enough. There is more I would yet discuss, but we should first return to Pandemonium's gates. I'll gather my thoughts on the way. Alright. Man, 
this place looks crazy though. Look at that. I owe you an apology, Rain. It was due to my own inexperience that Hephaestus was so easily able to take hold of my mind. I also owe you thanks. If you and Thymaeus hadn't chosen to be to brave the chaos occurring in Pandemonium, then I would have never known Mahabrea's story, my father's story. It was a tale I too was fascinated to hear. I very much look forward to speaking with Azem on my return. I cannot help but wonder how much of this he foresaw. I'm afraid I cannot allow that, Elidibus. So long as you retain control of Pandemonium, there is work to be done. But of course, I shall first free the remaining warders and restore this place to its former glory. Using the facilities in Tartarus, we should be able to reverse the changes made to their bodies and minds. I shall stay behind to oversee the process. That is well, but I must yet learn why I was considered the key to Hephaestus' experiments, and how he intended to revive Athena. Such questions are best left unanswered. In fact, I forbid the pursuit of that knowledge. The boundary between man and creation shall never again be crossed, and I intend to destroy the crystal containing Hephaestus' essence, that this mistake never again repeats. I see no reason to gainsay your judgment. There is yet the matter of your crystal, however. Truth be told, I had not considered its origin until I saw the one containing Hephaestus' ether. I was struck by how wholly different they were. There is another? Yeah, so where'd that one come from? While well, imbuing a crystal with memories is a simple process, storing a message, a warning even, would be something altogether more complex. This was also... This also means that someone besides the present company, and Azem, was aware of the plot unfolding within Pandemonium. Then why would they not make themselves known even now? No threats remain. Perhaps it was one of the other warders. We shall question them after they are freed. The task may take some time, a resource I'd rather not steal more from you. Return at your leisure, and we will share our results then. You've done more than enough for the time being. I am of the same mind. Leave the loose ends to us and continue upon your journey. Or if you are so inclined, take a much needed repose. This talk of journey smacks of a zim. <laughs> yeah. As well it should. He has pledged to keep moving until he has seen every corner of the world. If you do find yourself with a spare moment, you might bring that crystal of yours to La Habrea. He may be able to offer further insight. Until then, my friend. Alright. Well then. I feel like that's a pretty good stopping point pretty good. I like the... I like how they decided to, like, go back. I remember they were talking about this before Endwalker, I think, I think Endwalker ever even came out, was... Uh, I think they were talking about going back and uh, redoing a bit of, like, La Habrea's uh, story, because it feels like... Because, you know, there were the three people, there was Emmet, there was uh, Elidibus, and then there was La Habrea, and of those three that were left after the Sundering, um, it felt like La Habrea was given like the short end of the stick, you know? So it's nice that they were able to like go back and flesh out his character now. And like, even just a little bit. But yeah, I think I'll stop it here. And then I'll get into Taros and we'll see if there's any more horrible disasters that fall upon us. Alright, I want to get some more recording done today, so I'm picking up where I left off. The
crystal that hangs from Arathonus's waist was a gift from me, made in the hopes that it would spark growth in his aptitude for magic. It's his plan he no longer requires it, but I see no reason he cannot wear it for a while longer. That? That's interesting. As you may have noticed during our battle, Wahabre's mask crowns me when I've transformed. It is said that we manifest in a way that reflects our innermost selves. I had thought that mask a symbol of the chains that bound my heart, but recent events have caused me to reconsider that assumption. I look forward to your returning with the crystal, but worry not, I shall try my level best to stave off loneliness while you are gone. Alright, let's go talk to uh, Rusinel. Why, if it isn't rain, excuse me if I'm not my usual chipper self, but we have not been without our difficulties in your absence. You see, communication with the airship Professor Claudian commissioned for his search was lost some time ago, and now we have quite lost track of where he might be. Well, that's not good. To make matters worse, Nemjiji has just sent word of an unusually large amount of energy coming from somewhere within the ethereal sea. I was just on my way to the Atioscope, in fact. Please, you must come with me. Oh, I wonder what happened. Holy shit, it's pandemonium. <laughs> what the fuck? And why is it in the ethereal sea? What? What is that? Is it real? Why is it that whenever danger visits the world, you are never far behind? Hey! How's it going? And you too. Professor Claudian's assistance, I take it. As you arrived before me, I take it you are involved in this. I would thank you to furnish me with an explanation. Now that's unexpected. I was not... <laughs> did not think that would happen. The whole of Pandemonium is now here. That seems like a problem. <laughs> While the research summary you've submitted to the forum gave, gave us no cause for concern, these details are alarming. The professor's last message indicated that he was on his way to Aziz Law, but we know not whether he ever reached his destination. rash endeavor, even for Claudian, but he has ever allowed the thrill of discovery to cloud his better judgment. We have no recourse but to entreat Ishgard's aid in searching for him. As for that unsightly fortress which has materialized in the ethereal sea, Pandemonium, was it? It cannot be left alone. For the time being, information regarding this matter must be strictly controlled as, so as to minimize panic. We will gather those with knowledge of the ethereal sea and continue monitoring it for further irregularities. You two, submit a detailed report to the forum at once. At present, we have far more questions than answers. Nevertheless, I would ask for your assistance at such a time that our investigation has concluded. I want to go look. I want to go see if this is what's in Pandemonium. Very good. Now, if you will excuse me, I must apprise the forum of what has occurred here. So I imagine it's still- it's also still back in the past, right? Normally, I would assume. It's not like it just straight up disappeared from the past and appeared here, right? Just when we need him the most, Professor Claudian remains unaccounted for. He even brought the crystal with him. 
we are left with scarce few straws to grasp at. While I am but a lowly assistant, even I can see that our two current problems are likely related. The same party or phenomenon may be responsible for both. Conversely, I see now that my unexperienced imagination failed to do pandemonium's pitiless fires justice. I can only wonder, if the facility itself traversed the ages, did the creations within do the same? What of the key wards? But answers to these questions shall come in time, I am sure. For now, I must do as Master Fortunal asked, and write that report. As for you, Rain, pray get what rest your responsibilities will allow. When next we call upon you, I wager we shall need you in prime condition. Yeah, probably. Skill speed. Okay, so I guess this is unlocked the, the Savage, so I'm, I may as well do that. Okay, let's see. Where's the next quest? Where do I go to pick that up? So where do I go now? Do I go back to Pandemonium? I go to Elpis. Yeah, so I've just looked up. <laughs> I thought the I thought the raid series was out fully. I guess not. Uh, it, it that's where it ends. <laughs> so I guess I'll just be leaving it at uh, Abyssos for now. Which I'm I'm okay with, I guess. I got other stuff I wanna be doing. I gotta I wanna go through the Mist of the Realm uh part, whatever how much of however much that is out now anyways. Looking forward to the next set of that, I guess. I don't know when it's gonna be out, but I guess I'll make a video on that when it is. So I guess we'll have to wait to find out why Pandemonium is just floating around in the Ethereal Sea, which is a pretty big question. <laughs> and a pretty big cliffhanger. So I guess I'll leave it there for now, and we'll get back to it when it releases. So, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.